Hey YouTube, in preparation for this hot spring hot tub that I purchased, I learned that I would need to have special electrical work done to you know, run the line from my breaker upstairs all the way down um, through the wall and out to my uh, 230 volt hot tub. So naturally the first thing I did was you know, get some quotes from some electricians. Um, I made sure to you know, ask a lot of questions to them and really understand you know, how they would do it. Um, with a thought in mind that I might be able to do it myself. So after I got the quotes back from them, it was around $2,500, and I you know, decided that I would try to tackle it myself. Um, I had done a little bit of electrical work before, nothing crazy, just ran one line um, for a heater. But um, you know, I looked at all of the instructions for the hot tub and thought that this was something that I could tackle. So I uh, ended up doing you know, fine, saved a lot of money. And um, I did make a few little mistakes here and there along the way, which are pretty frustrating, but um, I'll let you know what those were so you don't make the same ones. Uh, if you do learn something, please leave a like down below um, to help out the channel. And um, yeah, let's get into it. The first obvious step is determining where the hot tub is going to be placed and where the electrical line feeds into the tub. I got the dimensions of my tub and outlined the patio and tape where it would be placed. My hot tub had the option for the line to go in on either side, so I planned to hide it on the side closer to the wall. Next is planning the route of the electrical line. In my house, I have a main panel with 200 amps and then a sub panel with 100 amps. The electricians confirmed that I would be able to run the line from my sub panel, which was great for two reasons. The first was because it was closer um, you know, to where I wanted to run the line and had less walls to go through. The second was because with a sub panel, you can easily turn off the power to it from the main panel, right? So there's you know, no risk of getting electrocuted. Um, so the plan was to run the line from the sub panel to the hot tub breaker box, which came with the hot tub, and then from the breaker box, um, run, running the rest of the line to the hot tub. So when it comes to the wiring, you always wanna look at the instruction manual and what they recommend. Uh, mine recommended copper wiring and um, different types of thickness, which is called gauge. So if we look here, we can see that, you know, there's eight gauge recommended from the sub panel to the breaker, and then there's 12 and 10 gauge recommended from the, the breaker box to the actual hot tub itself. Um, so basically the, the lower number of the gauge, the thicker it is. Uh, so we can see here a couple examples, you know, a four gauge would be for you know, furnaces and large heaters that re require more electricity, whereas an 18 gauge would be just, you know, for your simple lights. All right, so now that we understand the gauge, um, if we go to buy some, we can see that the gauge is represented by that first number. So you see that eight, three right there. And that three is actually the number of wires that are included inside, you know, the bigger, thicker wire. So you can kind of see the picture right there. Um, and the three really isn't very intuitive because there's actually four wires in there. Um, so you'll have your two power wires, your black and your red, and then you'll have your, your neutral and also your ground. Um, neutral is the white one. So even though it says eight three, there's really four wires in there. Um, and an interesting little story that saved me a lot of money. Um, I also learned that there is UFB wire, which is meant for outside and NMB wire, which is meant for inside. Um, you can see here, both are 50 feet long. One's $105, uh, and the other one's 289, almost three times as expensive. Um, and when I had read online, I, I learned that, you know, this, um, you know, outside wire was supposed to be more expensive than the inside wire because it requires, you know, extra insulation and more protection. Um, and when I, was at the store, I asked, um, you know, the, the service attendant, you know, why there was such a big disparity. And he just told me supply and demand. There's just a lot more um, demand for this inside wire um, right now. Um, so this, you know, outside wire is, is selling at a third of the price. So, so I decided to use that. Um, he said that there's, you know, no reason why you can't use the outside wire inside. It's, you know, even more safe. And um, yeah, it worked out fine for me, except for when I was trying to um, put it through conduit um, because this was thicker and it was harder harder to get through you know that one inch like pvc conduit which i'll i'll talk about later all right so now that you know the plan let's get into some action i unscrewed the front plate on my sub panel and used a voltage tester to see that the box was live with power 
Then I went to my main panel and turned off the power to the sub panel. To be extra safe, I tested again with my voltage tester to make sure that there was no current flowing to the panel and there was zero chance of me getting electrocuted. The two pole 50 amp breaker takes up two slots, so I removed them with some pliers. I also removed one of the punch outs in the panel box where I would snake the wire through. Then it was time to drill a hole in my basement ceiling where the wire was going to pass through. I then used a red PVC tube I had lying around to push up through the hole so I could duct tape the wire to it and just pull it down rather than trying to snake the wire from the top down through the small hole. There we go. All right, and hopefully I can pull it down and come through that hole. I measured the diameter of the punch out hole to one inch. So naturally I bought a one inch connector piece. Nope, it was too big. Apparently you need a three fourth inch connector for a one inch diameter hole. This resulted in more wasted time and another trip to the hardware store. So hopefully this helps you from making the same mistake. Next, I fed the connector um, through the wire and mounted it to the bottom of the panel. All right, so I bought this 50 amp breaker. You know, it looks exactly like the ones that I've seen online for it. It's even got the same, you know, D on there. So it's the same brand. And I've been trying to figure out how to put this on. But when I look at the back, it's not like the back of the others. Look, it has those clips on it. And that's how it kind of stays on there. These, this doesn't have those clips. So I guess I got the wrong, wrong type. All right, so back at the hardware store, I was able to find the correct 50 amp two pole breaker, even though there's only one pole on it. I don't know, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, I was able to find the right one and plug it in. Now let's get to some of the wiring. All right, now you guys can see a nice side-by-side -side comparison of my breaker box um, to the instructions that I have. So it says um, the red and the blue wires from your 50 amp. My 50 amp is right here. And you can see my red and black wire, black and blue the same thing. And it also says to have your, your white um, and neutral one. So you can see this white one going up here to the uh, you know neutral bus right here. And then the ground wire right here um, going in. It actually goes right here, you can't really see it, but it goes in here to the, the ground bus. Um, so that's that side. Now I'll be snaking it down through my basement. All right, so now that I've got it coming down, I've got these staples that are one and one eighth inch, so it should fit on there nicely. And I'm just gonna staple it to this joist running across. We'll probably have to go just like right under, keep going all the way, and go along the top there and down. Should be take me like 10 minutes. You should never say that. It took me more like half an hour, but here it is for you in about 10 seconds. All right. So now I put the panel up here, drew a little, put a little hole in there with the marker. Time to drill one inch. That was easy. It was a lot easier than I thought because I just got through one layer. I didn't get through both. <laughs> oh my God. All right, take two. There it is. Let's go. All right, so now I'm just feeding this wire through the pipe. All right, so I've got my pole through the wall. I had to use the hammer drill a little bit more just to open the hole a little bit, but now I'm gonna eventually, now I'm gonna have to cut this. We're gonna have to be super careful because now the wires are in, I forgot about that. I uh, probably should have cut it beforehand, but all good, I'll just be really careful when cutting the PVC. Um, I'll use like a little handsaw or something. I saw another YouTuber use this duck seal stuff which is kind of like a little putty. So I uh, just made a little circle, put, used uh, some gloves and put that on there. Um, so just so 
you have a really nice tight seal that's uh, completely waterproof. Alright, so let's go through the wiring of this breaker box here. We'll talk about the 8 gauge, right, which is coming from the sub panel first. So you can see these thicker wires here coming from the hole. That's those. We have the red right there. We have the black right there. I just drew on it with a little marker. Um, then we have the neutral up there. I snaked it all the way up and underneath. And then at the bottom, we just have the ground, right? Coming right there. So now we'll just talk about the you know wiring from the two boxes here. We have the 30 and then we have the 20. Um, underneath, you can see that I have a black and a red for each one, right? I have the 10 gauge, which is the orange, and the 12 gauge, which is the yellow. Um, you don't really need the, uh, the neutral and the uh, ground for, for this one, uh, as I came to learn. All right, so the mistake that I made was initially taking this white neutral wire from the 10 gauge and plugging it into my neutral bus um, instead of actually putting it into the 30 amp breaker itself. Um, it's kind of hidden behind the red and the black on the 30 amp, so I didn't realize that it had a slot to go in. And um, when I tried to you know, power it on, I got the orange flag that came up um, you know, telling me that something had tripped. So um, that was the reason. I didn't have the neutral in there. Once I put the neutral back in, it was all good to go. I took the 12 and the 10 gauge wire and snaked it through this flexible PVC conduit, which I would then bury underground uh, where I had the grass here. And I made sure to leave plenty of slack and room for you know, the wiring to reach the hot tub and connect to the hot tub's board. All right, so now the hot tub was delivered. It was looking beautiful. It wasn't right in the exact spot um, yet. I needed to have it away from the wall a little bit to you know, do the wiring. So I snaked the 12 and the 10 gauge wires through the little conduit that was in the hot tub. I attached this little piece, connector piece, um, that's an L. And um, yeah, now I was ready to wire it up. All right, so I've got, you know, my uh, 12 gauge and my 10 gauge wire here and I just followed this diagram um, there's different instructions depending on what kind of spot you have I have the VVN VVN <clears throat> so um, you can see here we take the 12 gauge blue put it in two red put it in four so 12 is the yellow so the blue goes in two, you can see it right there. The red goes in four, and then the rest. Now we take the 10 gauge and we have a blue, red, white, goes in four, five, six, and then the ground goes in the GND. So now we got the 10 gauge, blue, red, white, goes in five, six, seven, and on the ground so pretty pretty simple um <clears throat> actually have the two extra wires here which i did not need that came with the the yellow um there's there they're they're not doing anything they're not uh connected it's just the neutral and the ground so um should be fine there all right now once this gets filled up and filling it up from right there once it gets filled up i'll uh power it on Turn, turn the breakers on and see what happens. All right, I'm pumped. After I figured out the issue with my neutral wire and turned on both breakers, I saw a light from my hot tub go on and I knew that we were in business. I waited a few hours for the internal pumps to get circulated and also called an electrician just to go over all the work that I had done and jump double check it. Um, it's been a couple months now and everything has worked great and I've really enjoyed using the hot tub. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below if you liked the video or have any questions about the whole process. Stay tuned for my next video on how I build this attached pergola over the hot tub. Peace.